say cheese. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Alicia, who smiles at death and reanimates your creatures so long as they have power two or less and you happen to be attacking with Alicia. Alicia's a very cool commander because she plays nicely with Margu aggressive cards, things that give haste and creatures that can be brought back from the grave, especially creatures that act as removal. There's a slight discard theme in this deck because we have to get cards into our graveyard. There's a slight sacrifice theme in this deck because we have to get cards in the graveyard if we want to enter the battlefield. But mostly, this is Mardu Aggro. And what do we do? Oh, we attack. We give our things double strike. We give them additional power. We make it to our opponents. Things are tapped. By the way, not all the cards in this deck uh, actually can be brought back with Alicia, but most of them can. And most importantly, we give our creatures first strike and death touch. So our opponents just can't deal with them. This is a very fun deck where you're using cards like Ravenous Chupacabra, Brutal Cathar, Skyclave Apparition to remove your opponent's blockers and keep swinging in. Alation's also fairly strong. Being a three mana, three two with first strike, kind of like Thalia, means that you are able to get in a lot of good early attacks. And if you're pairing that with other good one and two drops, like say Ragavan and Thalia, the other Thalia, and the new one Inti, you can get our damage in, you can grow your creatures and you can try to take your opponent down before they get established. But if they do get established, don't worry, Ruinous Ultimatum is here, so your opponents are, uh, you know, a bit more one-sided when it comes to battle. This is a very fun commander, by the way, when it comes to bringing back expensive creatures. You only have to pay two mana to reanimate something with Alacia, which means that these five drops, like Ankle Shanker, uh, or Angel of Invention are really fun to bring out. There's actually a lot more high-cost creatures that you can put in this deck that I just chose not to because I just put in my favorites. I also wanted to have a little bit of uh, new cards going on in here, and since Bico also brings creatures back that happen to be small, I figured, sure, it's a nice sacrifice piece, and it can be brought back with Alacia. So we're going to put Alacia into the queue, and we're going to slam jam and bring back our creatures. Mythweaver Hawk, the kitty cat that doubles up your lands. Uh, this hand is okay, not amazing, but I'm still going to keep it. Uh, it's got a turn one, it's got some stuff to do on turn two, specifically surveilling and trying to put a creature into the graveyard. And turn three, we can start playing out these creatures. Since we go first, at least we're able to get in front of their ramp. Ooh, now that's a creature to put in the graveyard, a threefold Thunder Hulk. This is technically a 0-0, zero, zero, but it comes into play as a 3-3 three, three, and comes with a whole bunch of gnomes. It's a very cool card for Alacia. We might be able to do some unblockable or difficult to block attackers too. Uh, I'll go for the Sokanzan since we know we want some red mana. Alacia's in play. Are you playing Pock? Typically, you don't want to play Pock unless you can immediately follow up with a land. Yep, they're going for Beanstalk Giant. That will get them an untapped forest. And with the remaining two mana, are they playing anything? Nope, looks like they're just passing back over to me. Uh, I could go for Double Strike this turn or the reanimation. I'm just going straight for the reanimation. I know what I want. And I want Free Bold Thunder Hulk for two mana. Pretty dang good. Are we gnetting gnomes? We are gnetting gnomes. And they're getting one big chunky critter. Uh, something notable is that Delnir will not make Alacia or the Thunder Hulk unblockable. And that's okay. I accept this. Plus two for your sacrifice another artifact. Okay, cool. Cracking open the windswept teeth. I'm going to grab a Boros, Shockland, use up this two mana to eat a gnome, to grow my gnome, because we either go big or go gnome. I want to make sure that the, the double strike off Blade Historian will make this big enough to kill that. Tap 
taste of my blade. Oof. I mean, I guess th those are... Oh, they don't come in attacking. Okay, yes. Yeah, so we'll just leave you back. So in with the Chunky Hulk. And I can either protect it... Oh, okay. Well, never mind. It, it will be way bigger than this because they had an entitch restoration, which is going to get them three lands, which is actually six lands, which means Hawk is going to become, what, a 12 12? Thanks. Do I want to protect the Thunder Hulk, though? Yeah, I'm cool with protecting the Thunder Hulk. Just so we don't have to, like, reanimate it, bring it back. No, it didn't force them to block the Thunder Hulk just because we didn't have that much damage. At least I don't think we did. We might have. Because you would be doing six. These would be going there. How many points for a gnome deck? I actually have a very strong gnome deck if you count Anna Pakal. Anna Pakal is a really, really good guard. She's in this deck too. Goodbye, puppy. It's fine, guys. Everyone's going to get super strong next turn and also maybe we can bring the puppy back. If I play Delny, then all the little things are going to be unblockable for Pock because Pock's too big. And unblockable for Vorinclex because Vorinclex is too big. So they got three big chunkies. Nice. So Rising of the Day or Angel of Invention... If I do Delny and Rising of the Day, all these gnomes are hitting for four. And I think that's going to be lethal. This will no longer be, uh, or, uh, this will be no longer, uh, too small for the unblockable. Or wait. Oh, right. I'm sorry. That's only for legends. It doesn't matter. We're still going in with all these. Um, you stay back. You stay back. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, these don't get the buff. For some reason, I was conflating this with War Leader's Call. No, this is the haste one, not War Leader's Call, which is the plus one, plus one, plus uh, pings to the base. Yeah, whatever. Thunder Hulk's gonna die, and that's fine. They're gonna take loads of damage. They're at two! Oh, in the previous turn, if they had blocked Alicia, they would have lived on, on one if I attacked with everything. Okay, that's rad. Uh, so we have these gnomes, they can block. Uh, Alicia can bring back the Thunder Hulk again. So it's kind of down to what they get this turn. They're getting two creatures from among these. They got the Scoot Swarm. Those will be able to block. And a Llanor Elf. Or a Kami. Looks like they went for the Kami. Um, the little things can block. So if they get enough Scoot Swarms, they will be able to prevent this gnome damage. Tireless Provisioner can gain them some life with food. Delicious snacks. I love that Pock is just out here, like, getting absolutely massive. Angel of Invention will give each of these plus one, plus one, though. The puppy. Mm-hmm. So let's see, we got ten of these, and they have eleven of those. Twelve with you. Hi, Selvala. Selvala can also block. Uh, Nykthos means they got loads of mana. They're gaining life. More life. More delicious snacks. I have to block one of these, so I will. Um, jump. Boop, boop, boop. Now, if the Angel of Invention is attacking in for four with the double strike in the air, they don't have that. Not quite lethal. They can block those, but they would lose them. And the Forsaken Crossroads, I think, is going to be coming in tapped. Because we went first. Dang, one more mana would have done a huge load of work here getting us uh, that Thunder Hulk back. Oh, 
Delny is doubling the ability. Hold up. I forgot. Delny. Delny, you beautiful creature, you doubled the ability because it comes in as a 2 1. Angel of Invention takes it home. GG, Puck. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Oftentimes, the commander for, oops, all Chandras, because she can get all of the other Chandra Planeswalkers closer to ult with her loyalty creatures, loyalty abilities. I know words. That thing, it's the first one. Make red Planeswalker number go up. I could get the uh, Stitcher Supplier out in turn one. I think I'll just save it for turn two and start with a Surveil. We're gonna wanna grab something with black. Shadowy Backstreet works perfect. Thalia. Um, against Chandra, I actually do really want this Thalia, and I don't want to be bringing it back from the graveyard in a few turns. I just want to have this. Hi, Chandra. Yeah, making her cost one more and a lot of the burn spells cost more, I think is going to be really helpful to us. Thalia, it is! I'm going to tax my Chromatic Lantern, sure, but... Most of our deck is creatures. I say, drawing a non-creature. Glacia, who smiles at death. Give it a big old grin. Next turn, we can play the Stitcher Supplier and see if we get something to reanimate, since I don't have anything now. Or if they kill Thalia, we'll just bring back Thalia. Tempting to seize those thoughts. But I want to do the thing that the commander does first, if I can. All right, cool. We got two different hits for Alicia. And they're stepping on her. Okay, fine. What else you got in there? I'm going to drop the Storm's Wrath. I really don't want them to board wipe me. If they play the Heraldic Banner or the Heart, we can destroy it with Loran. But they might just play Bone Crusher Giant since it's bigger than our creatures. I know, I wanted to bring out like Inti or something. That would have been cool. A four mana Chromatic Lantern. Hello, Chandra. This costs four, so they won't be able to recast it using this. Ooh, they have heart. They don't have three mana, though, so they can't sacrifice it if I... Oh, I don't know. Use Loran to explode it. I've exploded your deer! How do you respond? By saying nice. Nice. I've got six mana now. Nice. Yeah, I could have like played Alicia or Angel of Invention that turn too. Is that my cat snoring in the other room that I can hear? Oh my God, it is. She's so pathetic. I love her so much. I broke their heart. Oh no. Are you gonna make some one ones or just get loyal to? We can do this together. It's so sad. My cat has like a little wheeze. That's wee. She's the bees wheeze. Um, Alicia, unless I get the boots out first, isn't gonna be doing too much here. So we're gonna bring out the angel of invention. Uh, I am going to go wide on it because the lava coil will kill it either way. I'm going to attack. Chandra with this. You over here. Can you see the cat? I wouldn't be able to get a camera to her. Ooh, what do you got? We're gonna trade with Loran. We both get to draw. 
and I'll hold this bloodstained mire. I can tap it for mana without having to sacrifice it, but I'm going to use it to surveil anyway. Do I come from the Amazon? Yes, Amazon.com. Owners of Twitch.tv. Okay, they're using Lava Coil on Thalia. That means I won't be able to bring her back because she gets exiled. But it means that all oh, their spells are now going to be costing a slightly fairer, not one additional mana. What do you got? Chaos Warp. The Banner. The Banner's kind of fun with her elementals since they become two ones. Oh, no, they are getting rid of Chandra to recast Lava Coil, killing Angel of Invention. I'm gonna crack this open. Uh, just one of the surveil lands. That is a land. I don't want another land, so I'll throw it to the bottom. That's gone and exiled, so I can't bring it back. But Inti and Bart are still available. I'm trying to decide if I want to um, play a laser, just set up the boots and hold the get lost. I'd rather the player. Do you pay the one? They did not pay the one. Leaving them with four mana. Mana form Hellkite. That's a good one. It'd be better though if I didn't kill it. Ravenous Chupacabra. We're swinging in. And I'm going to grab Loran since they played that heraldic banner and destroy it. Being able to recur these, like, destructive threats in Alatia is one of the strongest things you can do. It's a good dragon. It's also a dead dragon. And good game. They're going for X equals 5. Banefire to the face. It will not be enough. GG, Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Anzrag, the Quake Mole. Anzrag is really great. He hits hard. He's a four mana, eight, four. If he's blocked, they get additional combats. Let's play the Shattered Sanctum. Since I only have two mana, I want to uh, use my removal where I can and how I can. Ooh, Rada. Oh, good. More mana. Mm, I don't want to use this while this is untapped because then they could sacrifice it in response and blank the uh, virtue. I'm wondering if they're holding up Lightning Bolt or something, and that's why they didn't attack with Gold Hound. Or maybe they're just like, oh, they're gonna dash in a Ragavan. I want to be ready to block. Here comes Anzrag. But this taps them out, which is a perfect spot for us to use some removal. Um, which removal do I want? Get out of here. Uh, I guess I have one extra mana, so hey, get extorted. Invasion of Ergamon. Takadilly! Thank you for the 45 month resub! I wonder <gasps> how many people with PhDs watch your stream. Hopefully, it'll be the many plus one after tomorrow. Crocodilly, oh my. Croc, croc, croc. Are you getting your PhD tomorrow? You're doing your defense? Godspeed. Fingers crossed that you pass. You got this. It's 
So now I have Vako, who is kind of in here as like a silly backup commander, uh, potentially able to bring out this threefold Thunder Hulk. I have to sacrifice another non-spirit creature to do so. Rada. Rada makes mana if she attacks in. Uh, I'm going to just swords her. Ooh, this is perfect. All right, so Stitcher's Supplier. Oh, we have other goodies too. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many choices. Okay, Threefold Thunder Hulk. Oh my gosh, we're getting so many good cards for Alicia. Okay, and I want to give this haste because it also triggers on attack. Perfect. I think I think your defense will go great for your PhD. I look forward to you and your fancy new degree. I wonder how many people with PhDs do watch the stream. The answer is probably a bunch because I know there's a couple professors and those usually have PhDs, I think. I'm doing a really good job not saying PhDs nuts. I'm saying I'm not saying PhDs nuts. I'm doing a good job. I'm very responsible and mature. We're gonna exile Anzrag and swing in for lethal. Glavalenu, first of the blessed. Makes it so when your vampires die, if they've attacked, they turn into demons. Or I guess they become sacrificed and then you get demons. Uh, I'm going to mulligan this to try and find three lands. Still a two lander, sort of. We have a Shattered Skull Smashing and I have a Selfless Spirit and an Anim Pakal. I do like these cards to start, so I'm going to keep it. I also like that we have all our colors. We have things to sacrifice and a way to sacrifice them if we manage to get more black mana. All good here. All right, and we got more white mana and red mana and colorless mana. Ooh, Skyblade of the Legion. There's a vampire they can attack with. And it's a vampire that they might just hold back so it can block the Selfless Spirit. Selfless Spirit's nice because it's a recurrable way for us to make our creatures indestructible, get free attacks. Here comes Clevelin you. They do need to attack to get this ability. So there they go. They're attacking with the Skyblade of the Legion and they might have ways to sacrifice it later to get that 4-3 demon. Vampire Demon? Vampire Demon. I shall forge on ahead. Playing an Impacal and swinging with a Selfless Spirit. This will make one Gnome. The Gnome does die. R.I.P. Gnome. Boys are ready to start reanimating things when they die too. If we find a way to discard Yogmoth, we could also just cheat him into play using Alacia. He's really good at sacrificing Anipical's gnomes. Govlin, you can also target himself with this ability. Preacher of the Schism. Nice. I have that in this deck too because it's really good for attacking with. It's also uh, got two powers, so Alicia can bring it into play. Ooh. Okay, so they're leaving everything back because Death Touch is real and it can hurt you. I'm going to pay three life so this comes in untapped. And I'm going to try to decide do I want to go for the Wandering Emperor or the Chromatic Lantern and Bitter Triumph? Um. I'm gonna go for the Chromatic Lantern plus Bitter Triumph here. I do want to do this first though, so I can get this into play. And I'm going to discard or pay life. Let's pay life. Don't believe in Death Touch. But Death Touch is real.
Something fun about Bitter Triumph in this deck is it gives you a way to put things in the graveyard intentionally for Alacia. It's good with a lot of reanimator decks. Ooh, okay, Clevel and you and the Skyblade are now coming in. This now also will die and become a demon. But this Chromatic Lantern is going to give me access to the double black mana that I crave. For Yoggins. Ooh, it's Arvad. Nobody died yet this turn, so Arvad doesn't grow. And a Duskborn Sky Marcher. This little guy. Okay, sweet. Uh, Ankle Shanker would give us Death Touch on all those gnomes. Which is kind of sick, but we're going for Yawgmoth. I'm going to swing in with both of these because Yawgmoth's just going to sacrifice them. These are dead. Duskborn Sky Marcher. I hardly know her. I think, I think Yawgmoth's a good card. <laughs> and like, when you have things you're just throwing in the graveyard, he gets even better. They might want to leave these back to block now. They only have three lands. Ooh, okay. Uh, I will sacrifice the Selfless Spirit to protect Yawgmoth. They do still lose for a life. And an indulgent aristocrat. Ooh. Since these tokens come in untapped. Oh no, they come in tapped. Um, I might be able to just take out their blockers. All right, I don't have to crack that open because of a chromatic lantern. I'm going to play before combat Wandering Emperor to get an additional counter on Enimpakal. I'm going to play Adelin to get an additional attacking creature. I'm going to swing in with all of these. Um, things happen. Creatures exist. And many of these creatures will no longer exist. One moment, please. We're going to sacrifice our human token. There is no human token. Um... Of these. Just making sure I'm set up right. Alright, cool. If these die, like, cool. Life total go down. Wait, was I swinging with lethal? Oh yeah, I should have just got rid of all their blockers. That's fine. Whee! They get a card in hand. And the demon. I think it wouldn't have had lethal. I got rid of the blockers. Oh, because they would have had to sacrifice so many gnomes. Very possible. Alicia's well, like, wait, this is my deck. Where am I? Not enough things have died for you, sweetie. I'm sorry. Ah, a bitter triumph. Okay, um, I'm going to sacrifice Adam Picall to shrink this. It only cost me three life to prevent four damage. Okay, cool. Triumphant return. This comes back, and he's a young hero. Is it really? Arvad grows. We'll go to combat. Um... Ooh, Aurelia's fun, too. I kind of like the ankle shanker here. This is, like, the funniest play, I think. Zimmy! Thank you for the two month resub! What are we playing today? We are playing Alicia. 
Here, I'll fly Alicia. Just so she's like in the game. And then I'm gonna kill her. Okay, there is no Alicia. She's not smiling at death. She's just dying. Uh, everything has first strike death touch. But more importantly, seven damage is going through. And victory is assured. GG Clavelenio. Orvar, the all form who clones. And what does he clone? Well, clones whatever you happen to be targeting. I am going to drop this because it's too high cost for not enough lands. Seems better. Uh, Orvar at least probably going to be playing something with good enter the battlefield abilities and then lots of good spells to like target your own things to make them stronger or just generally better. Protective spells also work really well with Orvar. The see a card approach, rescue, Curse of Golem, and Memory Lapse. I'll let you have your counter spell, but I won't let you have your copyable creature. Behold, Rahilda. And she goes back on top of my deck. Yippee. A bobble gives them some ramp. They do have these uh, tap or bounce abilities here. Techno Shaman, thank you for the 19 month resub. Do you ramp? Got five mana now, and Orvar is here. By the way, um, Orvar can't copy himself, but if you make a non-legendary copy of him, you can make an army of Orvars. It does work. You're a 3-3. Three, three. I'm a 3-2, I have first strike. All is good in the world. Helm of the Host? Helm of the Host works, but there's also, um, is it Arenicus's Vile Duplication? Is a really good choice. Use this wooded foothills here. We know the cards in their hand. The Sacred Foundry. And Aurelia. They can tap or bounce one thing. And they could just tap or bounce the other. Right, so it looks like they are tapping Aurelia. You seem to just let me hit there. Alright, cool. Three damage from Alicia. Hmm, two Storm Chaser Drakes. And these will draw them cards when they target them with spells. So, card advantage and a sweet clonable creature. Uh, I think the sweet clonable creature should probably get put into exile. And if they happen to counter this, if it's not exiling it, we can bring it back from the grave when we attack in. Uh, I'll go for the fake Storm Chaser Drake. Stern Dismissal on Aurelia. I'll still swing in with Alicia. Now I've got two werewolves that are just begging for it to become nighttime. Kind of forcing my opponent to play things on their turn. They're doing a Fading Hope, bringing the Drake back into hand so they can play it again. And also get a copy of it and draw a card. Oh, I love Ankle Shanker. Hmm. Are we getting multiple attacks? Are we shanking ankles? I want to shank some ankles. 
I'm gonna throw the ankle shanker into graveyard. Ooh, and a goblini. Looking good. I'll pay the two. And we're out here. Shanking some ankles. Oh, it has to attack for this. That's fine. I'll just bring it back next turn. I'll have enough mana for both Aurelia and some reanimation. Maximize altitude. Ooh. Oh, I didn't mean to pay the three on this, but this is fine. A chilling trap. They're going to make this smaller to make more of it. Everybody grab an ankle. Oh, life is a resource. They're time twisting. Draw more cards. Make more clones. Bring it back from the side. It'll come back and end step, I think. Oh, River's Rebuke. Everybody back in hand. Even the goblin. Makes my cool plans a little bit harder to pull off. I have to draw a uh, land here. I can certainly try. The land. I love paying life. All right, since they keep copying the uh, Storm Chaser Drake by bouncing it back into hand, let's see if we just go ahead and exile that bad boy. Excuse me? Beep beep. They can kill it and bring it back, but it won't have a plus one plus one counter. I'll just do it again next turn. What will they top deck? Bonk. You get your Drake back. Not quite lethal, but if you have a buff, it will be. Remember when I just randomly paid three life before? Could make us more likely to die here. There's not that many buff spells, by the way, in blue. There's a lot of ones that change your power and toughness. So, for example, they could turn this into a 4-4 four, four, and this into a 4-4. Four, four. That's the kind of thing that uh, blue does. So many decisions. I'm being told on taps not working. Let me try restarting it. I have eight life remaining. Ooh, war leader's call. Oh, the war leader. Holla holla. Swinging in and bringing out that brutal Cathar. Ah oh, woo, it's nighttime, baby. We're out here first striking. All three of these will die. And thanks to first strike, we will be left with a secondary attack. But since this came in tapped, it doesn't untap here. I listen, I can target this. I can't actually bring it out. It's fine. Nice. 
great. Bring in the five. My fault for not ordering these abilities, so this would untap. They could have been at one. But that that would have required me paying attention to abilities. Oh, hey, River's Rebuke is back, because they were able to fetch Mystic Sanctuary. Uh, you have a Guardian Idol. But what else do you have? The answer is death. Boop. And we boop again. Double boop. GG Orvar. Vanifar evolved Enigma. This is the new Vanifar that cloaks, which goes great with cheating things into play. This hand's a little slow for that. But we do have Rising of the Day, which is super fun. So I'll get a mulligan. Uh, mana difficult, but mana's still good. Start with the Blight Step pathway and put a creature into my graveyard. Hopefully off the Stitcher's Supplier. Just kidding, I actually didn't put any creatures into the graveyard. Ma'am? Excuse me, Lanor Elf. Uh, ramp is illegal. I can't let this happen. Where's the creatures to put into my graveyard? Alicia, get out of here. I didn't bolt the bird. I locked Twain, scorned the Llanowar Elf. The way this Vanifar oftentimes gets played is you get big, good permanents into play by just using Vanifar to cloak them from your hand and then using a flicker spell to throw it back. Okay, so apparently Wash Away was on top of their deck because they just found it with the Hedge Mage and put it into the graveyard. I scorned the elf. And it actually works really well with cards like Uro because you can get around their sacrifice ability and just flip them over for three mana because they are cloaked. Which means you can pay their creature costs to turn them face up. What else you got in that hand? Wow, I have no creatures to reanimate. Oh! Okay, so that's the counter spell. That's the time twist. That's the coma. If coma's not in hand, then coma cannot be cheated into play with Vanifar. This flips over. It's going to start buffing up these creatures. Poem is tricky because it is a kill on sight card, but it's also really hard to kill. Because once it gets one serpent out, well, trouble is abound. My plan here, by the way, is to kill Vanifar before they go to combat. comes Vanifar, and there goes Vanifar. GG. The first sliver, but is it the first sliver or the first and only sliver? First sliver is a good card because it's in five colors and cascades when you cast it, meaning that it's hard to deny its value. Even a single counter spell won't hit both sides unless it's something like Whirlwind Denial. Are they in denial of how cool our creatures are? Yeah, maybe. What you got there for a sliver? Included Delta, probably fetching a Triome. Or a good one cost spell. Nice. Luminarch Aspirant. It's either that or the Selfless Spirit. 
make my monster grow. The earlier I get this out, the sooner it starts putting counters on things. Feature a schism. Somebody here being killed, countered, burned. Oh, they're surveilling. You surveilled. Rusko! Okay, so this is almost certainly not actually a sliver stack because Rusko isn't a sliver. He doesn't even play that well with slivers. Salvalo, would you get lost? By the way, I intentionally bolted this in here because if my life total is identical to my opponent's and I attack with creature of the schism, I get a count or I get a creature and I get to draw a card. It's a two for one. But I had to uh, bring my life total to be the same as theirs first to get both sides of it. Key to the archive. Gets them a very strong card in hand, but they do have to discard for it. Also taps for two mana of any color. We can survive a board wipe through a selfless spirit since we can make our creatures indestructible. I unfortunately denied myself Delny value by putting counters on these. That's okay. I'll still draw a card. Hold up, did I have lethal off ankle shanker? Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Oh, nice. We win. Out of here for a sliver. Ivy, gleeful spell thief. Ivy's a very cool commander. She copies spells that target one creature. It's a may ability, so you don't have to, but you probably do. Because, you know, they're good spells. Usually you see uh, Ivy being used to copy things like mutate, uh, things like curiosity effects, and just good auras that you can throw on your creatures, and defensive things too, like indestructible hexproof until end of turn. Great to have. Um, I am going to cook their goose. Okay, let's get that goose out of here. Give her of runes, has nobody to protect, so she will crave violence. Oh, Colony Garden. So no blue mana. They're not playing their commander here. I'll bring out Rahilda. And I'll use the shadowy backstreet for surveil. It's not a creature, so I probably don't want to put it in the graveyard. But I'm going to put it in the graveyard anyway, because it's just not what I crave. Slither Blade, an unblockable creature, holds auras well. And Satessin Training. Draws them a card, buffs this up. It gives it trample, but like, bro can't be blocked, so. Yeah. Stampy, thank you for the sub. I'm going to attack with Rahilda. She's got first strike, and if she hits them, you get to exile the top spell, or I guess a random spell from the library. It's Gnarlback Rhino. Hmm. Okay. Don't think I need that. Hmm, I don't know if I call that's good either in hand or in the graveyard. I'm going to put it in hand. And I'm trying to decide, like, oh, do I want to let it just become nighttime? And I can hold my Baleful Master? Do I want to play my commander? I gotta hold the Baleful Master. It's night time! Rahilda's got double strike, baby! Well, hey there, Ivy. So the blade's coming in. And I imagine I have some form of protective spell here. Let's see what it is. Dive down. Okay. This is the second spell cast and by the way, so this will flip back over to daytime. Daytime! And 
a call. Sliding into battle. Swinging in with Rahilda. Could give Rahilda protection from green here. I, I don't think I need to do that. Ooh, a Vesuvian Duplomancy. That's going to start cloning creatures, and it can make non-legendary copies of Ivy, too. I want to see it happen. I don't think I've actually played through a game where Duplomancy and Ivy were able to, like, stick around long enough to do stuff. So I'm not going to go for trying to kill Ivy here. I'm going to play War Leader's Call and swing... Without the, everything. All right, we get two pings from the war leader's call. Ping pong. We steal. Kind of hoping for a one cost thing. Okay, reclamation sage. They're down to six life. What's it gonna be? Wild shape makes. A spare ivy. By the way, you have to cast the spell on the thing you're copying. Um, the copies aren't cast. All right, what's it this time? Okay, the touche, our touche of knowledge, is going to uh, get copied onto the other ivy. Or I guess it's, it's getting copied onto this one, so they get another ivy. How am I doing? Doing great! Playing out games without even using my commander. Everybody but the giver. Swinging on in. That triple ping. Ding, bow, bow. And win the game. GG, Ivy. And the other Ivies, too. Small army of Ivies. GG. Omnath, Locus of the Royal. I played against one of these earlier, and they conceded on, like, turn three after I killed one of their mana dorks. So hopefully this one sticks around so we can have some fun, because we've got some really fun cards here, by which I mean uh, things to put stuff in our graveyard, sacrificables, the sacrificee. We're doing a lot. All right, we got our Haunted Ridge to start since I don't have any red one drops. The goose is loose. Omnath is able to deal one damage when it enters the battlefield. I'm going to start by just seeing if I can grab some cards off the top of their deck with Rahilda. This is just a good aggressive card. All right, uh, they used removal, lightning bolt, taking out Rahilda. By the way, this is the Omnath that deals the damage on enter the battlefield for the number of elementals, but also buffs up elementals and eventually starts drawing cards. Um, it's landfall. And landfall can be really good. Let's see what we get in the graveyard with a Stitcher's supplier. Wow, no creatures. Thanks, Stitcher's supplier. I'll grab a white mana source. This black white works out just fine. Jadar. Jadar will make ourselves a decayed zombie. Thanks for nothing, Stitcher's supplier. Jadar will die. But that's okay. Cavern of Souls. I will name human. It is the most common creature type in my deck. And I think I'll just pop down Yawgmoth. Would you like to block? I'm putting full control mode on. Damage is dealt. And I'm going to shrink Omnath by sacrificing this zombie. Omnath is now baby.
Omnath has undone the babification. How dare you, Omnath? Migration path to get them two more basics. Becomes a 6-6. Six, six. And the next lands they play, I believe we'll start drawing them cards. Oh no, two more. Because it's uh, eight or more, and I currently have six. Oh, hey, Bart. Swinging in with the Stitcher Supplier. Perhaps they'd care to block. We'll just sacrifice something if it gets blocked. I'll shrink the Omnath rather than hit the bird. Ooh, I realize now... Enough mana for a three drop here! It's Morbin time! Morbin opportunist. Going to draw me some cards if creatures die, and creatures will be dying. Escape to the wilds, lets them play additional lands this turn, and gets them additional lands to play. That Flooded Strand being another fetch land is great for them, since it will get them two triggers for Omnath. But I don't know if they have another land here. It would have to be in their hand. But they got two mana, so they can play one of these two drops. Paradise Druid, Signet. Something from their hand that I don't know about. I did get something from the ring back. The ankle shanker. Better if I'm playing it from my hand, though. Hi, I'm that. They drew a card. They did get another land to play. and Bart. Who do I most want to sacrifice here? None of y'all. We're just vibing. In my current thing I most want to bring back. Maybe Ankle Shanker. If I can get it to survive a turn. I'm just kind of waiting here. If, if they play Chandra, I could sacrifice a bunch of things in response. We're starting with Vorinclex, who grabs two lands. Specifically forests, but they don't have to be basic forests. They could be, like, shock lands. Omnath draws a card and gets even bigger. Did you just minus three? Well, do you? There's only one elemental out here. It's just Omnath. 
And I will sacrifice these three to kill your four in collects and draw three cards. They're going for it. And in response, we go a one. This will draw. Yeah, I can just put you back. A two! A three! And all those guys die. And Yagmoth and Adolin are just out here like high-fiving like, Yes! Four toughness humans! Get out of here, Omnath! Get out of my way! I got Chandra's to attack! You can just replay. Hmm. What else do you got in there? Oh, some good cards. I'm gonna get rid of the one that's actually um, like burn. The counter spell barely hits anything in this deck. I want to grab a white source. Life is a resource, and that's why I'm gonna keep spending it. Booties or cuties. They're deciding what they want to throw down. Looks like it's Omnath. Omnath can deal one damage. You go for my face. Looks like they'll go for the token, maybe? Okay, face. Have I hurt myself more than they've hurt me? Yeah, probably. Listen, I have a Yawgmoth. I'm gonna use him. <gasps> a map! And things open. Not quite at enough mana for relation to reanimation. I'm just out here like, please play the Lotus Cobra. I want to kill it so bad. <laughs> the map finds Rada Heart of Keld, who lets them play lands off the top of their deck. I have so many cards in hand. I have to discard because it's too many cards in hand. Ooh, indestructible creatures. Don't mind if I do. Indestructible and uncounterable. Thank you, Cavern of Souls. No, your disdainful stroke won't work here. One puppy dog. Bark, bark. Did you get to counter? Makes a weird guy. I will attack with all of these. And they're taking it? I don't like that. This worries me. If all this mana. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. It would not be a good sacrifice. Prime time. Two more lands.
We went for a Restless Vine Stalk and Hall of Storm Giants, two creature lands. Could I have a card that gives Trample? You have some toughness between my creatures. Thankfully all those creature lands are tapped, so I can't use them to block. Brainstorm. They're going to look at their cards, reorder the top of their library. Putting some cards from hand back on top. Could it be? It's like, I I'm wondering if they're like, digging for like a time warp. Or if they already have a time warp, because they do have five mana here. An Emrakul? I mean, five mana Emrakul is real, but I don't think they have it. They haven't played that many different uh, card types. Beans! This just gets them land. They go to combat? They look at my puppy dog, and they concede the game. GG, Omnath. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you liked seeing Alicia's friends win the game. Alicia didn't actually come out and do that much in this video, but I promise she does a lot. When I was testing and building this deck, I got to recur Ravenous Chupacabras, Lorans, and Skyclave Apparitions, and repeatedly take out my opponent's stuff. The funniest thing was I've had a POC game where they couldn't keep the pock under a Skyclave Apparition would have been permanently exiled. So I just kept grabbing it, exiling it, and they would just keep replaying it. Eventually they started running out of lands, believe it or not. I know a pock deck running out of lands? Insane. If you're looking for the deck list, it is in the description below. And if you'd like to suggest a commander for me to brew, please just let me know in the comments. Let me know what commander you'd like to see me either rebuild or build for the first time, and I'll try to get to it in the Brawl Stars videos. Also, I am approaching 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. And when we hit that goal, I will actually be doing another Brawl Stars variety hour where you get to submit decks and I will play them. And then the best games with those decks will make it into videos that I can put on YouTube, which is really fun. Thank you so much for watching and have a brawlful day.